Hi, and welcome back to The Journey. The journey whose goal is living an authentic life, living life where God gets the greatest glory and where you get the greatest joy. We are in the very beginning of the journey, learning about establishing a correct foundation so you can get the greatest joy and God can get the greatest glory. In the first lesson, we talked about laying a strong foundation. That was done by learning from Alan and his crew as they laid the foundation for his studio. We then looked at building upon the foundation, how important it is to get the walls right, the doors right, the windows right. Everything must be done correctly so the building will last over time. This is what the Apostle Paul spoke about. In the scriptures, Paul spoke about building on the foundation of Jesus Christ that he was laid. He was talking to Christians, so he was simply saying that believers are to form their faith upon Christ. Because he was speaking to believers, he was clearly saying that they can build correctly or incorrectly upon Christ. Meaning today, there can be Christians who have a faith in Christ, but are not living correctly according to God's word. And the journey is here to say that, yes, there is a great part of the building. In other words, there are many people in the body of Christ in the church that are living incorrectly. We say life is about God, but we live life as if it is about us, as if everything revolves around us. We say God is on the throne and everything revolves around him, but we live life as if we are on the throne and everything revolves around us. In our last time together, we began focusing on God on his throne. We looked at multiple passages that talked about a throne in heaven, and God being on that throne. In today's lesson, we want to add to that. Not only is he on the throne, but everything revolves around him. Let's look at Romans chapter 11, verse 36 again. From the New International Version and the New American Standard Version, they say it in the exact same way. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. For from God, everything is from God. He spoke and it came into being. Nothing came into being that God didn't create. He is the author of all things. He has willed everything to be that we now see and experience. And through God, meaning all things hold together in God. Nothing holds together without God making it hold together. And to God are all things. That means everything around you right now. Your computer screen, the computer itself, the light you are seeing by, the chair you are sitting in, the clothes on your back are to point you to God. It means for me the same thing. These clothes are to point me to God. The shoes on my feet are to point me to God. These tools are to point me to God. Everything is to point us to God. I love the way the New Living Translation puts it. For everything comes from Him and exists by His power and is intended for His Glory, all glory to him forever. Amen. Those who translated this version point directly to his glory. Everything is for his glory. The International Children's Bible says it this way. God made all things and everything continues through God and for God. To God be the glory forever. Amen. Everything continues through God, meaning if God didn't want you or me to hold together, poof, instantly, we would be nothing. We would no longer exist. We would be gone. Everything is through God. We are trying to drill home a point. We are trying to lay a firm foundation. God is on his throne and everything is to revolve around him and point us to him. Now, there are different ways of saying it in the Bible. Let's look at 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and see what it says. O Lord, the God of our ancestors Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, O Lord. And this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, 
for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand. And at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. Oh, I love how it says it there. It puts God right where he is supposed to be. His is the greatness, the power, the glory, and the victory, even the majesty. Everything on this earth is his. Though you paid for it, in some sense, you are renting the computer you are using from God. Why? It belongs to him. Everything on earth is his. Everything around us is his kingdom. We are subjects to him, whether we like it or not. And anything we have comes from God. Any wealth, any honor was given to us by God. He holds all power. He makes us great. He gives us strength. This is the God we worship. This is the God who is on the throne. Surely from that passage, we would conclude everything revolves around God. Look at how Daniel put it in the second chapter. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. He said, praise the name of God forever and ever. For he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. <laughs> Whoa. Not only does he have all wisdom and power, but he controls, note, not watches. He's not a couch potato God. He controls the course of world events. He is in charge of who is a king and who is not. On the macro scale, on the big picture of this world, we have the tendency to think that this world is about world powers. It is about which nation has the greatest influence and army on earth. But this is clearly saying, no, it is not about them because God is the one who puts them in power and controls the events of the world. If he controls the events of the world, it must be for a purpose. If we discover what that purpose is, then we will discover the true meaning of life. But it also goes on to say he gives wisdom to the wise. Who are wise in our society? Well, scientists certainly are wise. It's not limited to them. There are many others who are wise, but it definitely at least includes them. This means our scientists who are discovering new things about the universe, about this world, about the laws of physics, about science, are given that wisdom by God, even if they don't know God and are using it against God, it is still given to them by God. Therefore, that which is yet unknown, which is yet undiscovered, undiscovered, it's undiscovered because God hasn't wanted us yet to discover it. Why? Probably because he has a purpose. And that purpose is key to understanding what life is about. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness. And if God is the one who gives it, then let's conclude everything revolves around him. What a God we worship. Paul, when he was addressing the men of Athens in Acts chapter 17, put it this way. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples and human hands can't serve his needs. For he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything and he satisfies every need. Now, there are quite a few things in there that help us to see that everything revolves around God. First, he made the world and everything in it. Although one may admire the pictures of Rembrandt, it is not about the pictures, it is about Rembrandt. In other words, although we may admire the beauty of a waterfall or the waves of an ocean or majestic mountains, it is not about them, it is about God who made them. Everything revolves around Him, the Creator. Secondly, He is Lord of heaven and earth. We've seen he is not only in control of everything here on this earth, but now we see he is in control of everything in heaven. Everything revolves around him. Thirdly, he has no needs. No one can serve him. God doesn't need us to serve him. He is completely in control and he is complete 
without us. Everything revolves around Him. And lastly, He gives life and breath to everything and satisfies every need. He not only gives us life, but meets our every need. And as James says it, gives us every good and perfect gift. Everything is from God. Therefore, everything revolves around God. Look at Paul's writing about Christ in the book of Colossians chapter 1. He says these words. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. Much of this we've already seen. God is the creator of all things and life is about him. But there are some new things that I want to point out in this passage. First, Christ existed before anything else existed. God did not come on the scene at the same time we did. We are not equal to him. God is superior. God never began, he always was, therefore he is preeminent. When I used to work in Libya in North Africa and tried to share my faith with Muslims, their thinking was very different from this and they would say things like, look, Mr. Bob, God first gave the world Judaism and the Jews blew it. Then he gave the world Christianity and the Christians blew it. So God said, okay, here's one last chance. The prophet will be Muhammad, he will give you the true and final religion for all mankind, and it will be called Islam. In their thinking, the last religion is obviously the right religion. It is what everything should revolve around. But in our thinking, we're reversing that. He who came first is the one whom all things should revolve around. We did not come first, God did. Therefore, everything should revolve around God and not us. God was, God is, God always will be. Therefore, life does not revolve around religion or us, it revolves around God. But secondly, look at the end of verse 16. Everything was created by him and for him. The universe was created for God. All of the distant galaxies, all of the black holes, every star, every planet, every moon, every comet, they were all created for God. Somehow, he takes pleasure in seeing them fly around, and he has a purpose for them. That, too, would mean that this earth was created for God. It was not created for us. It was not created for people in general. It was created for God. He had a purpose for it. It is for him. But let's go the last step and make it very personal. It also means that you and I were created for God. We are not our own. Our purpose is not for ourselves. Our very existence is for God. We should not wake up in the morning and say, hmm, what do I want to do today? Rather, we should be saying, what does God want me to do today? I was created for him. He must have a purpose for me. Remember Romans eleven thirty six. 36. I don't want to go over this verse too many times, but it is so key. You and I, we are a part of all things. You and I were created by him and through him and to him. In other words, for him. Everything revolves around God. As everything is to go to God, that means all glory and honor as well. Paul writes this to Timothy in his first letter to him in the first chapter. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal king, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen. Note the words, he never dies. God will never die. Certainly he who created everything and who never dies should be at the center of all things. Everything should revolve around him. That's why it says all honor and glory to God. Not just now, but forever and ever. In Paul's concluding remarks to Timothy, he says the same thing again, but with a different twist. In chapter 6, verse 16, he says it this way. 
He alone can never die. And he lives in light, so brilliant that no human can approach him. No human eye has ever seen him, nor ever will. All honor and power to him forever. Amen. He is so wonderful, so brilliant, so awesome. No human eye can see him. He lives in unapproachable light. Certainly all honor and glory go to him. He not only got the glory in the past, but he gets the glory now and he will forever be on his throne getting the glory that is rightfully his that he deserves. Everything in this life is about God. It is for God. Because we do not see him, unfortunately, the old proverb, out of sight, out of mind, usually comes into play. But just because we do not see him doesn't mean everything should not revolve around him. It should, and it does, whether we believe it or not. And if it does, in the big things of life, it should be in the daily affairs of our life as well. We find a beautiful expression of this in the book of Revelation. In chapter 4, which we looked at earlier, we pick it up in verse 9, we see this. After the four living creatures are crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, we see that everything is for God. And when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne and will worship him who lives forever and ever. Note again, he lives forever and ever and ever. He'll never die. Picking it back up in the verse. And they will cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and because of your will, they existed and were created. Why do we worship God? There are many reasons, but the key reason that is given here that we will give forever and ever is this, because he created us. That's right. Just because he is the creator, he is worthy to receive glory and honor and power. Because he willed us into existence, we should praise him. And if we are going to be praising him forever and ever, certainly everything should revolve around him. Now, the one phrase, because of your will, can easily be translated from the original Greek, for your pleasure. In other words, everything was created for God's pleasure, to put a smile on his face. You and I are here to please God. This earth is here to please God. The universe is here to please God. Everything revolves around him. We go back to Romans eleven thirty six. 36, for from him and through him and to him are all things, all, A-L-L, -L, everything. All things were created by God and for him, for his pleasure. All things are to point us to God. To Him be the glory. Our focus should be on Him. Everything should revolve around Him. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. It says these words. The Lord has made everything for His own purposes, even the wicked for a day of disaster. Yes, all things. Even the wicked and what they do. God is completely in charge and in control. God is using everything for his own purposes. So what are we learning? We are laying upon the foundation that Paul has given us in Jesus Christ. If we don't build upon it correctly, God will not get the greatest glory and we will not get the greatest joy. We are learning that God right now and always is on a throne and he is ruling and reigning over all things. We have also found out that everything is to revolve around him for from him and through him and to him are all things. We are also finding out that he is to be worshiped and prayed simply because he made us. He created us. He thought us up. For that reason alone, he is to be praised. For that reason alone, everything revolves around him. Once we put God in his rightful place, we begin laying a correct foundation that will give us a theology that will be able to stand up against anything life can throw at us. This Bible is all about God.
life is all about God. Our lives need to be all about God. Therefore, we need to be asking a simple question. What does God get out of this? And not, what do I get out of this? Learning to ask this question will help you discover your greatest joy and will bring God his greatest glory. This is simply another lesson of laying a foundation that will take us to that goal. Thanks for staying with us in lesson three of the journey. We hope your foundation is being established firmly, bringing him pleasure.